who finally decided to show up. You look like you came here immediately after finishing up some work. I'm very happy to see you here. But we're not late, are we? It's just that everyone else arrived ahead of time. I propose that the last one who arrived be put in charge of today's speeches. Nah, there won't be any speeches today. Oh, really? Well, even better. Come join us over here. Let's share some great food and drinks and chat about all sorts of fun things. Everything looks quite good. Wow, Paimon can't wait! Traveler, just look at all the delicious food here! Delicious! Oh, this grilled meat tastes amazing! The food was specially prepared for you by everyone in the Grand Bazaar. And we have gifts that were sent by the residents of Sumeru City when they heard we were holding a feast. Everyone that came said that you saved Sumeru and wanted me to thank you all on their behalf. Ah, feels kind of nice to be seen as a hero. I could get used to this. Being a bodyguard is also a hero's job. You've always been amazing, Dia. <laughs> My lady sure has a way with words. Thanks. I'm glad to hear it. And I'm happy to meet everyone that participated in the great plan. Don't mention it. Come to think of it, we've really done something impressive together. It's unbelievable! We owe it to our abilities. And luck. Really? Why do I remember everybody thinking that luck was against us and feeling like we hardly had a chance of succeeding? That's how I remember it too. It's luck that brought us together, and it was luck that let us form a team. Then, it took even more luck for us to formulate a plan and implement it successfully. Moreover, judging from the results, everything worked out well. Yeah, everyone gave it their all when it mattered most. It was almost like a performance. We took the stage and put on our best show. Everyone played their part. And thanks to everyone's efforts, the performance was a great success. So, would you say we're good actors too? It's such a blessing that Lesser Lord Kusanali was able to return to power at the Academia. Yes, even after being abandoned and neglected so many times, She's finally returned. Uh-huh. Lesser Lord Kusanali once used all her power in a great disaster, which resulted in her losing all her wisdom and memories of the past. The Academia basically abandoned her because of it. This should be something everybody should remember. Uh-huh. You look surprised. I didn't say anything wrong, did I? No, everything you said is correct. <sighs> That's good. Something wrong? Yeah, what's with that face? You knew all of this already. <clears throat> Even if those two giants of the Academia are here, I still have to say it. Those sages really have some nerve. 500 years ago, Lesser Lord Kusanali used all her power for the people of Sumeru. And what did they do in return? If you bite the hand that feeds you, don't act surprised when it turns into a knuckle sandwich, right, Sino? Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but their treatment of Lesser Lord Kusanali calls for a more severe punishment. You could simply tell Lesser Lord Kusanali that you wish to have Azar and his accomplices severely punished. 
I respect our deity's decision and won't interfere in any way. While we're on this topic, why didn't you accept the Academia's invitation to become the Grand Sage? Are you trying to say that I'm fit to be a sage? <laughs> Not at all. But every person handling this election process has said that you are the most suitable candidate to lead the Academia right now. Why? Because he dethroned a czar from power? <clears throat> Could you try to put it another way? This is a good thing, yet you're making it sound like I overthrew a czar for my own personal gain. But seriously though, I always wondered if you had some personal motives behind it. I did have my own motive, but it had nothing to do with being a sage. If the rules of our nation were suddenly cast by the wayside, then it wouldn't be long until chaos ensued. I had no intention of letting their dreams disrupt my life. By that, you mean your life working as the Academia's scribe? Precisely. Uh, wait, is that all? So, that's the only reason why you joined us and came up with all those plans? It's reason enough. You've certainly got quite the personality. You flatter me. All right then. How about you? You've already resumed work as the General Mahamatra, right? That's right. Will you be happy with that life? It's not about being happy. There are merely a lot of things that I must do. Even so, keep your spirits up and try to be happy, okay? And try to smile more every day, just like I'm doing now. <sighs> Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. I seldom participate in such lively gatherings, but the atmosphere here is quite good. No, this gathering today has a unique meaning. The Grand Bazaar is lively because the people here feel happiness from the bottom of their hearts. Unlike the farces at the Academia, that happiness is an emotion that'll be forever alien to those bookworms who have driven themselves insane by studying. Hmm. I seem to have taken both keys when I left the house. <laughs> oh well. Ah, there you are, Traveler. Well, how is it? Are you enjoying the feast today? If there's anything you're unhappy with, just let me know. I'll be sure to take note of it. <laughs> That's good. It's the first time I've ever invited so many exceptional people to one place. I was a little nervous myself. You see, every guest here is quite extraordinary. It's unbelievable that we've got everyone together here. Almost like a fairy tale. Make sure you live it up tonight. I'll be happy as long as you're enjoying yourselves. I'm honored to have her think of me this way. If I have a chance in the future, I would really like to invite her to one of my performances. I can't explain why, but I just feel elated right now. Thank you. The atmosphere here is good, and everything is delicious. <laughs> yeah. I don't often come to such places, but it feels quite good. I have a lot to handle these days. Otherwise, I could show you around. <laughs> There's always next time. We're friends after all. <sighs> this feast is pretty good. I like it. My lady, the grilled meat over there is delicious. Have you tried it? Yes, I also tried some fruit just now. Oh, they're very sweet. What an amazing place to relax. No wonder everybody likes to rest at the Grand Bazaar. You said it. Oh, look who else is here. 
Hello! Oh, I'm so happy Nilu invited everybody. Oh, now I have the chance to meet all the heroes. Hey, less of that polite chit-chat and more eating and drinking. The feast is about having fun, not stuffy formalities. Hey, what's wrong? Your head is starting to droop. Hey, you can't just fall asleep here. Paimon will go find something delicious for you to eat. You wake up once you've put something yummy in your tummy. Of course, just wait here for Paimon. <laughs> it's me. Mm -hmm. You may blame me for being a bit too self-indulgent. I was thinking about talking with you, and the next thing I knew, I had made a connection with you. The connection between us is amazing. It's like Flora and the fence it grows upon. I heard there's an amazing celebration feast today at the Grand Bazaar. I wanted to have a look for myself, so I snuck in. Lately, I've been so busy dealing with all the fallout from recent events, so I really haven't had any free time. Although you've already helped me with a lot, there's still one more thing I hope you can help me with. Say thank you to everyone for me. Uh, oh, is it not convenient for you to do that for me? But if I just show up all of a sudden, people will become all quiet and stiff, won't they? What if I end up scaring them and ruining this wonderful feast? That'd be the last thing I want. Hmm... Let me think about it. Okay! Yes, I have. You said I should go thank everyone as myself, right? So... I've decided to borrow your body for the time being. Please don't blame me. The floor also climbs up to the fence to get closer to the sky. Up. What's going on? I didn't expect to have a conversation with the consciousness of Lesser Lord Kusanali in the Grand Bazaar. Interesting. Is this also a part of the feast? No, no, of course not. Are you... Lesser Lord Kusanali? Hello, Nilu. You know who I am? Yes. I already know every one of you. Nilu, I'll hate them. Sino, Dia. Paimon, and Dunyarzad. Lesser... Lord Kusanali? I took the liberty of occupying the Traveler's body so that I could thank all of you in person. Thank you so much for rescuing me, even if that meant placing your own safety in peril and taking the risk of becoming enemies with the Academia. The Sages, the Doctor, the Balladeer, and even the entirety of Sumeru. 
Without you, without any of you, I would have been in a much more difficult situation. Had you not helped me to resolve the crisis, not only I, but Sumeru and even the entirety of Tevat would have suffered great misfortune. People refer to you as the heroes who managed to rescue a god. I'm quite fond of this name. It not only explains your identities, but also bears witness to your relationship with me. Please, allow me to present to you my most sincere gratitude. Lesser Lord Kusinelli, you... You have done so much for Sumeru, and I, I... I didn't even have a chance to do anything for you. You don't have to do this. Zinyarzad, the suffering you endured during your illness is also proof of you being with me and praying for me. Thank you. You don't need to be so ceremonious. It's always been my duty to protect you. This is how the relationship between the Academia and Dendro Archon should be. We just did what was necessary and set things back on the right path. You're an Archon, but you act so humble. You really don't need to be so polite with us. I... I'm honored to have been able to take part in this plan. I hoped you liked the dance I dedicated to you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. right about now. If you have any questions, now's your chance to ask. Nahida! Hello, Traveler and Paimon. <sighs> what a fantastic night. I'm still immersed in all the happiness and joy, like a candle floating on water. So are we, and that's why we're here to talk with you. Is there anything you want to know? After recent events, the Akasha can no longer function as it used to. I've given it some thought, and have decided to shut it down permanently. But this is definitely not a bad thing. Even from the beginning, I've been planning to shut it down. The Akasha's centralized administration of knowledge has always restrained people's curiosity and curtailed the number of paths available to them. I don't think this is good for Sumeru. Although people may initially feel a little uncomfortable with the loss of the Akasha, they will soon understand that this life is more suitable for them. And as for the future of Sumeru, I'm preparing to regain control of the Academia. The former sages have received their punishment, but the new sages have yet to be selected. I will oversee the process personally. I hope that the new six great sages will be more focused on academics. Sumeru needs such leaders more than ever. The other big issue is the people of King Deshret. All the residents of the desert, in fact. They have been mistreated for far too long. I've already taken some measures to address this. It will take some time to rebuild everything, but no matter if it's culture, friendship, or trust, we will rebuild it. You mean, what happened after the doctor put you to sleep? Not exactly. The top-ranked Fatui Harbingers, up to number three, 
possess power comparable to that of gods. I was no match for him in that kind of situation. However, in spite of the bad situation, I still managed to make a fair deal with the doctor. I'm sure you remember the entity that changed your fate, the Heavenly Principles. In fact, the Heavenly Principles has been quiet since the Conria disaster 500 years ago. I used this point as leverage against the doctor. I told him that the Heavenly Principles may be awakened if I destroyed the Gnosis. Although it was just a bluff, he still fell for it. I assumed that the Heavenly Principles wouldn't just stand by and let such extensive damage to its laws take place. And as for what I exchanged for the Gnosis? The exchange served as both punishment for the Doctor, as well as a boon of new knowledge that I couldn't refuse as the God of Wisdom. He's still in a coma. I've hidden him like how one would hide a feather. I know you have many misgivings about him, but as someone who had become a god, he has retained a number of very useful features. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't do any evil. In addition, there are still some mysteries left in him. Some things may be very clear from my perspective, but he is still yet to understand them himself. His future will be determined by fate. Is that where you're headed next? Fontaine, the Nation of Justice? As far as I know, that nation operates in a judicial system. Does their Archon personally judge people? No, there's a Chief Justice in Fontaine. Generally speaking, the Hydra Archon, Fosalor, won't preside over individual trials. However, even then, Fosalor will still make herself present at just about every trial. It seems that she just likes to immerse herself in that sort of atmosphere. As Archon, she still reserves the right to influence the final verdict. Anyway, let's just say she's got, uh, a very unique personality. Are you sure? Isn't there something else you haven't asked about yet? Huh? You mean... About your sister. While you were resting at Gandarvaville, I took some time to perform an ermine soul search for information on your sister. Yeah! Isn't ermine soul a repository for all the information and memories of Tvat? So there shouldn't be anything on him or his sister. This is true in your case. Ermin Soul indeed does not have any information on you. However, there must be something different about your sister. Because as it turns out, the world has recorded information on her after all. What? There is only one possible explanation. She belongs to this world. But nothing about this makes any sense! Wasn't this your first trip to Tevat? Hmm... According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, she began her journey through the Seven Nations of Tevat. But just as her journey was about to reach its conclusion, the Erminsul records on her suddenly become fuzzy. What do you mean, Fuzzy? Did something happen to her? All I know for sure is that somebody, for reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating her fate. And whoever it is, if they can do that, who knows what else they're capable of. But even that wouldn't explain how she somehow comes from this world. Something else I noticed was that, according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. What's a Descender? Paimon's never heard of it. Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis, right? 
A very important part of the intel was about this world's descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. Traveler, you are Tavat's fourth descender. Huh? So the Vatui count three other descenders before the Traveler, and his sister isn't even one of them? That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first descender was likely what we now call the Heavenly Principles. As for the other descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time. <sighs> Paimon's head's about to burst from all this crazy new information. And yet, even knowing all this, I'm sure you must still have a lot of unanswered questions. I must say, I truly regret that I can't help you more as the God of Wisdom. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through each one of them. And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. I'm sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. All right, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes. And maybe I'll appear in your dreams. <laughs> to know? And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. I'm sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. All right, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes, and maybe I'll appear in your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> 